Hey, it's Doris with all of the books, and I've seen all the 24 and 48 readathon TBRs pop up all over the place today and yesterday, so I thought I'd get in on that, that action. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention is if you are new to BookTube and you're like, what the heck with readathons? Like, I was so perplexed as to how people found out when they were coming because, I mean, obviously you know that 24 and 48 is coming up because everybody's posting about it, but it starts Saturday at midnight, like Friday at midnight, I guess you'd say. Um, so I always wanted it more advanced notice than that, and I finally figured it out. It's Twitter. So if you follow at Readathon News on Twitter, and I will type that down below for you. Um, it's Little Book Owl. She keeps a Google Docs calendar of all kinds of readathons that people tell her about, and it's a great resource. So, definitely, if you are a little bit of a planner nerd and you want more advanced notice about readathons, and I mean, when you're new, you just don't know these things, but check out at Readathon News on Twitter and you get the scoop ahead of time. It's awesome. You can plan your calendars, make it look pretty. So yeah, anyway. And look, <laughs> I'm wearing my little sheep sweater today. It always makes me feel like such a school teacher when I do. Anyway, I'm excited because tomorrow's Friday and I have a readathon. I've really been enjoying um, readathons. I've just finished my first year on booktube and I've I was thinking about it lately, and I like the ebb and flow of the reading pace with readathon. So, like January started off at such a leisurely pace. I didn't finish my first book until January 10th, and it was a middle grades novel at <laughs> that. Um, I guess I was just, you know, slowing down after pushing it so hard in December. But then I jumped on the Bout of Books readathon and just really cranked it out and got motivated. Um, and then I've been reading a little slower, and I've got this other fun readathon. So I like that ebb and flow, ebb and flow, ebb and flow, the changing paces of you know reading life. But anyway, let's just jump into the TBR. I've also, I'm just chatty. <laughs> I'm also really um, super pumped at my my um, Middle East TBR. It was fairly large, and I was just going to read some of it, you know, in a, as a mood reader kind of thing, which one I was interested in, but I'm getting to the point where, you know, if, if I really get in gear, I might finish them, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy, but anyway, let's really get to it, so I finished two books yesterday, those were, um, Home Fires, and, um, I forget the other one, it was nonfiction. Oh, there it is. The Good Immigrant. Anyway, so I've started a new two today. This one, um, Genesis, Truman, the American Jews, and the Origins of the Is Arab-Israeli Conflict. I started this one this morning. I'm already 40 pages in. Um, I've started making my kids read for 15 minutes, and it's awesome because <laughs> I get to read too. <laughs> But anyway, I was worried that this one, it's nonfiction and it's very it's academic. I was worried it would be a slow read and, you know, I'm running out of time in January. Not that that matters, but, you know. Um, but I am absorbed in it. I think because I'm so, so, so interested in the topic that I just, I'm immersed. So I'm very happy with this. Um, and also, the other one I want to start is The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kaddish. And this is the one one off my five-star prediction list. It's really a chunkster. Um, so, I don't know if I will be reading these during the 24 and 48 because I'm thinking I want to read some shorter stuff just because I'll be vlogging and it's more fun to read shorter stuff when you're vlogging. So, I may... Um, get into these as much as I can today and tomorrow and then put them on hiatus until after the readathon. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and then my audiobook right now is Khaled Hosseini's And the Mountain's Echo. 
this is an excellent audiobook. It's read, read by the author and two others, and it's just really well done. Um, and obviously, Khaled Hosseini is a phenomenal author. Anyway, but I only have about four hours left in this. So when I finish this one, I'm going to start Amy Tan's The Bone Setter's Daughter, which is a reread for me. So that'll be good. You know, if I'm doing it, reading, listening to it while I'm doing other things, it won't be as big of a deal because I kind of know the storyline. Um, but then this is the stack. This is, oops. Wow. This is, um, let me get my act together again. This is the stack that I've still got from my Middle East TBR, except with the exception of those. Um, so Mouse 1 and 2, these are the graphic novels. And I feel like it's, these are definite for the readathon. And then I have three books that are in the 200, um, 200 ish page mark. So I've got the reluctant fundamentalist by Mo Mohsin Hamid, um, novel there. And then these two nonfiction life in year one, what the world was like in first century Palestine by Scott Korb. This one, um, a friend of mine gave me and then Letters to a Young Muslim by Omar Saif Gobash, um, another nonfiction. So I think those three are plausible because like I said, they're 200 pages. And then I don't know what I'll get to of these three. Um, I would like to get to In the Land of Armadillos by Helen M Merrill's Shankman. Um, I really, this one I've been wanting to get to for a while, so this, if I finish those five, this is probably what I'll grab next. And then these two, I don't know if they'll happen. Um, which would buy Tahira Mafi. This is the sequel to Neverwhere that I finished earlier this month. It was actually my first read of 2018. Um, and then Amos Oz Judas. This one is very, very doubtful because it's more intense in 300 pages. So, but anyway, yeah looking forward to this weekend. I think it's going to be great fun. And if you're looking to find out about readathons ahead of time, check out Twitter at readathon news. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.